Welcome to another episode of Knowledge is Power, where we have different experts from different view to come and share with you their expertise. Today, we have a very good topic because in our group, I have seen a lot of us who have trauma, especially with something that we call trauma bond. So today I have an expert here to share with us about this topic and how do we cut that cord. So my, I have two speakers on today uh, because they are come, coming from the same company, the Coaching Consult. We have Susan here. Hi, Susan. Thank you for being with us today. And we have Caroline. Good morning. So Susan, would you be able to share with us a bit of your background? Okay, well, where does one start? <clears throat> the beginning, I guess, is a good place to start, but the beginning will, will weave through the presentation. Trauma bonds is a big topic, and before I introduce myself, I'd like to say that I'm not a therapist or a counsellor or a psychologist, because this is a topic that can go deep, and so I just wanted to set that, set that frame that I'm, I have been coached for 30 years, I've grown up in the industry. I, I think I had my first client when I was 19. And, and I think that coaching has, has, has been my passion because I know it's also helped me. I've experienced trauma myself in various forms. And so I do believe that I, I, I am an expert on the subject uh, because of my experiences and also because of the thousands of people that I've helped over my career on, on different areas of, of health and wellness and performance, because that's what it's all about. I, I started studying the brain when I had uh, babies, actually. My, my son was born with an intellectual disability. Uh, he he's, was born with three parts of his brain damage, multiple food allergies, and he had a seizure every 20 minutes. He is drug-free, allergy-free and seizure-free because I always ask myself the question is what do we have to do to make it better? What do I have to do to make it better? How do I have to think to make it better? I always use that word better because one thing that I think that has got me through my traumas in my life is asking that question. I didn't like not feeling good. I didn't like not being in control of me and my life. I, I didn't like feeling all those feelings that can, can cause you to sink into that wave of despair and, and feel like you're drowning and you can't get up. I didn't like that feeling. So I, I was just always just used to ask myself, what do I have to do to make it better? And, and I think because I always asked that question, I always found answers. And, and I think that's, if, if the only thing that you take today is, is that, is ask yourself questions. Uh, because as soon as you become curious, you are going to find the answers. And that blew me away. I mean, I was only very young when my son was born, when I started to, to play with this concept. But then I realized that it had been an, an unconscious concept that I had used my life, even through some of my earlier traumas. So always be curious and ask yourself questions because you will go, you will go in search of the answers, even if you're not consciously aware of it. And that's, and that's one of the big secrets. Ask questions and you start to become, you become, you start to build your confidence because you want to get, you want to take that breath of that breath. You want to feel peace of mind. You want to feel relief. You want to get to the top of that wave. So, so you don't feel like you're drowning. And that's, and that's one, that's one thing that I know that has saved my life. So I, I've grown up in the industry. I've worked in, I've lived in three countries. I've studied in three countries and I've helped, I've helped men and women across the globe in my career, all because I have a passion to help you feel better yourself. Trauma bonds very simply means that you're, you are connected to a trauma because of the goods and the bads of the relationship. Let's just call it that. There's good and there's bad. The goods are high. The goods become like so great that you get pulled into the situation or the person. You love it so much that you start to believe that that you you, you wake up in the morning with hope in your heart, believing that things can be better, um, and then they're not. And and so you know you, you you sink into that wave because you don't know how you're going to get out of it, and then it's good again. 
and and so it, it connects that bond it makes that it builds that bond because of the of the good and the bad very very simple explanation but i do think that we have to keep it simple so we so we believe it's easy to come through it and to fix the problem if that makes sense that definitely does. That definitely does. A lot of us that who are in a traumatic stage, that we find that there's no way, there's no option, and there's no other path. And I think by cutting all the crap that we've been telling ourselves and what other people have told us is the, the, the core need of what we need. But I also understand that there is a lot of emotion around it. And sometimes we do need that understanding of what we are going through, that compassion, that love before we can move forward. Please tell us about bit more about um all of this emotion is i look at emotion as a gone power or a go power emotions either going to pull you forward or pull you down into that wave and i use the wave because it's very visual you know when an event in life happens um and whatever the trauma is that you're experiencing is you you ride that emotional wave and and life becomes this you have good days bad days good moments bad day, bad moments gosh you can have a hundred different emotional states in one day when you're working through trauma um and and so then you start to sink into the wave and when when you really when you're really too connected into it emotionally you sink deeper into that wave and and then it can seem very challenging or even impossible to be able to get in control of it emotion is is it's one of those things that you know we we can't live with it and how we can't live without it sometimes because when you are going through a trauma um and there's there's just there's it's a sliding scale so let me just start with keeping it very very general when you first experience a trauma, there's there's a lot of shock. There's a lot of, oh, my gosh, um, is this really happening to me? That There's a lot of acceptance about what is real um, and what's not. There, there's disbelief that there's this there's this consumption of pain that that you don't lose you, you lose sight of everything else except this disbelief that is this happening to me. And and so you've got to you've got you've got a choice to make. And when you're in this really deep emotional state where you just feel like you're sinking and, and you cannot see any hope, you cannot see forward except being completely associated into the pain of the moment, then there, there's there's you've got to allow yourself to feel it for a little bit. You must allow yourself to feel it for a little bit. Um, and then and then it's about practicing stepping away from it. Now, when trauma first hits, when the event first hits, sometimes that seems almost impossible to do. And if, if you've never experienced trauma before and you're experiencing something that's like brand spanking new to you, uh, then, you know, you've got to pull on courage that, 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 that I believe that we all have courage. I believe every single one of us has courage. Um, and so you've got to pull that courage so that you don't sink too much into the wave. Because what happens is once you start to sink into that wave, unless unless you start to, I guess, decide that you want better, let's just use that. You just have to decide that you want better. I don't like feeling this way. I don't like feeling this way. And, and so that you can start to, to move up through the wave because the deeper that you sink into it, the more challenging it is. And I'll, I'll use the word hard because hard isn't the word I use very often, but the harder it is to get back on top of that wave. You've got to allow yourself to feel, but you have to be very mindful that you don't allow the feeling of the state of disbelief and pain to completely take over. Now, if you are, if you're you know you're working through trauma and and it's it's happened the event has happened a little while ago like the event is in your past but you're still living in the pain of the moment then there are strategies that we can we can help you with that are going to show you how to move forward rather than still live in the pain. One thing that I realized that you know I have to be able I have to be able. My thinking was I needed to learn how to disassociate from living in the pain. And I just always had another little brain anchor that I used to use is that 
because when you're feeling this 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 pain of disbelief and um, where it consumes every single part of you your heart is breaking into a thousand little pieces um whatever the trauma is uh, there's going to be heartache heartache is associated to trauma um and when you're in this heartache sometimes you know it can be so so challenging and this is when you need to seek help this is when you must really reach out if you're if you're moving through a trauma but it's been weeks it's been months even years um, we allow weeks and even months. Um, I remember a psychologist saying once that I heard that, that, you know, it, it, the first 12 months of any trauma is is all the firsts of anything that you experience through trauma, whether it be death, whether it be abuse, whatever your trauma is, you've got to allow yourself to, to work through it, but you want to be in control of it. And I think I think that's the key here, that you want to be in control of it, of it. But if you've got years that have gone past and you're still living in the pain of the trauma, if you're still living in the disbelief of what has happened, then please seek help. Because, you know, I one thing that always managed to, to get me through, I buried a daughter. And the day that I buried her, I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, this is so, this this the pain of this is more than I can bear. There has to be a meaning to this pain. There was nothing sadder than a little white coffin and I passed out and I woke up with smelling salts in the back of the hearse and I and I just remember thinking there has to this pain has to mean something. Her little life had to mean something. And and I know that that became an unconscious driver for my life because I wasn't going to allow the pain of what had happened to define who I was because then that would detract from the meaning and the love that I had for her. That would take away from her her being here on this earth. So so you've got to create your own little brain anchors that are going to help you rise above that wave so that you can continue to just keep moving up through the waves. I'm not going to tell you it's easy, but I am going to tell you that it is possible. Um, that for me at that time was one of the things that that helped me was to to not not to really not to understand the pain because sometimes there's no understanding of it. Sometimes we there's no like reasoning it out or analyzing it. For those left brainers that are listening, try not to analyze it. Um, and for the right brainers, try to stop visualizing it all. Just come into a mutual place, know that it is painful, and give the pain some meaning so that so that you can rise above it. Make your life be defined by what you can learn from it. And and I know I know that sounds very practical, but the 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 faster that you can start thinking this way the faster you're going to start seeing that you are worthy of living a healthy, happy future. Um, and this is when we can start to disassociate from the pain a little bit, disassociate from the painful emotion so that we can then use emotion as a go power. Um, so, you know, and then, and, and then it's, you're the only person that can be honest with yourself. You must be honest with yourself. How are you feeling right now? Write that down. What is the one thing? What is the what is the one word or the one sentence that pops up when I ask that question? What are you feeling right now? Write that down. And, and really work through that. What does that mean to you, what you're feeling right now? Is what you're feeling right now causing you to feel good or is it causing you to feel unhappy, unhealthy? Is it causing you to feel lost? Is it causing you to feel that you know life is just has no meaning be honest with yourself and then and then it's all about the next point because you want to focus on what you're feeling that could be painful but then you want to cross the line and focus on what you want to do so that you can move forward so that's that's the I know that that was a little bit of a long-winded answer but it isn't a cut and dried answer it isn't a one two three answer it's we're we're dealing with human emotion. We're 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 dealing with human pain. We're dealing with what can be so overwhelming that that it, it can almost seem hopeless. That there is hope, um, and so it is. A, it is really a broad question. Um, it, it's a it's a question with a broad answer. Uh, so I hope that that uh, that answered that question with as much clarity as what I could give it.
Definitely, because what I find that a lot of people, it's not that they choose to be in pain. Yes, we do need to take some kind of responsibility of our own action. But a lot of us are kept in that pain because of the thinking that we don't understand what's going on. And when we don't understand what's going on, we keep trying to replay in our head, okay, this have happened. Why did I do that? Why do I do this? So what are some of the tips that you can give us for those of us that who are trapped in that emotion that I want to know and understand what's going on without that understanding, I feel like I can't give it closure. You know, again, a, a question, very, very broad answer. Uh, because if you are stuck in the pain of trauma, if you're if you're in the, if you're in that loop, because you got to remember, we're talking about trauma bonds, and trauma bonds are the, is the looping. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling bad. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling bad. Um, you know, this is going to work. Let's talk about an abusive relationship, because I think an abusive relationship really is is, is relevant for this topic. And, and I've, experienced, I've experienced that. My last husband um, had bipolar. And, and so we had extremely amazing, where this man was just the most exciting, most brilliant, most fun, most loving human being you could ever possibly meet. Um, and then he wasn't. And so when, when, when the times, when times when it was like so amazing, um, you get pulled into it, you, you like you fall in love all over again, it, it gives you hope that there's, there's possibility, oh my gosh, that was just a bad day, you start to justify the bad days, you, you start to, to see it through, through eyes of, of hope and love. Um, especially if you have fallen in love, if you're in love with your partner or your husband or what you know, whatever the situation is, then it renews that and then it's not. And then the pain comes in and the abuse comes in and whether it's physical, emotional, or sexual, you know, any, any, all abuse is emotional. And I, you know, when people say, oh, I've done this, I've got this abuse or that abuse, all abuse comes under, in, under the same banner of, as far as I'm concerned. If you're being physically abused, you're also being mentally and emotionally abused. If you're being sexually abused, you're already also being mentally and emotionally abused um, and, and physically abused. So, you know, so, so it, it's all very tight, tightly, tightly knitted together. Um, and when you're with somebody that loves you one minute and hates you the next, this is, this is where the, the bond comes in. You, you, you feel loved, you feel connected, you have hope in your heart, and then you don't. Um, but then, uh, and, and again, you can have these shifts in emotions, you know, 10 times a day. It's like, good, and it's bad, and it's bad, and it's good, and it's good, and it's bad. And it's like, ah, I'm going crazy. So how, how do you get out of that? Um, how, did I, how did I get out of it? And I think, how did I manage it? Because the one thing that I learned is that two things that, I, that became very, very, very clear to me was, was that, we cannot change somebody else. We cannot help somebody else see what we see. We cannot help somebody know what we know. And the big one is that if you're in an abusive relationship, the person that is the abuser doesn't see you. This is, this is so important that trying to help the person that is causing you to be in the situation, um, and I'm saying causing you to be in this situation, let me make it very, very clear that we are responsible for all the decisions we make and for all the decisions we don't make. If we're in a situation that is causing, if you're in a situation where you really are causing pain, the only thing that you need to do is do whatever it takes to break that bond. You've got to find a way to break that bond. And that is a decision and a choice that you can make because we cannot change somebody else. We're only responsible for ourself and that was my big aha the day that I realized that my husband didn't see me he didn't see me at all he didn't see my pain he didn't see what was going on with me at the time he didn't see me which meant that I had to see me which meant that I had to stop and see me and, I, and I'll share a story with you that still to this day brings tears to my eyes because it was life-changing for me um, I was, we were living in a small town, small desert town in America. And I, I wasn't allowed to have friends. And, and if you're in a situation, you'll know what I mean. 
Um, I chose to be there, uh, but for me, for the for my mental, physical, um, and emotional safety, I just played the game. I lived within this person's model of the world, and that's and that's what really tightens the bond as well as when you're living in in the model of somebody else's view of the world. So I would get dropped off in the in the town centre, and I was sitting in this little creative cafe. It was a beautiful little cafe, and I was just sitting there. I don't think I was thinking, I was just being. I was just surrounded in this beauty and happy people and I think I was just being. And this woman came up to me and she put her hands in my hand. She she, she looked at me, she came right up close to my face and she said to me, you're here for a reason. This is all about you, you're gonna be okay. She kissed me on the forehead and she walked out of, out of the cafe and I never saw her again. But what I did do is I stopped and I had to I had to start to use it in context of what we're talking about today. I had to find a way to break that bond. I had to find a way to disassociate from the emotion of what I was living with. And I knew I had to take some different actions. So the very first step that I did, the very first step I took to breaking the bond was to remove my children from the situation so that was the very first step that I did so what is one thing what is just one thing that you can do right now just one thing and it doesn't matter what it is it's just about you taking one step doing one thing taking one action changing one thought to to breaking that bond just one thing the other the next thing I did was I realized, and this was the second aha that I had, is that I lived every single day living living in the value of another human being and not seeing my value. Every day I would wake up thinking about what I could do to make him happy, what I could do to keep him calm, what I could do to surround him with joy, what I could do so that I was safe. And if that's your thinking, if you are waking up every day thinking about somebody else and not thinking about yourself, then maybe that's the very first step that you take to breaking the bond because you are worthy of living a healthy, happy life. You are worthy of living a life that you want. So those are the two big ahas for me. And when I, when I, after that, after that event, at the cafe, I realized that I really had to just decide that this was going to be a learning for me. What was I learning from this? You've got to remember also that I'd been a coach at that stage, you know, for 15, 20 years. So I put on my coaching hat and you may not be a coach, but I want you to think about reaching out and having a chat because, because I knew how to coach other people, I just found a way at that particular time to coach myself so that I felt in control and safe. And I think, I think those two words are the very first two words that you want to think about. And be curious. Remember, it's about being curious and asking yourself those questions. What is one thing that I can do today that's going to cause me to feel safer? And what is the one thing I can do today that's going to give me back control? Because you want to be in control of you. Because if you, it, it, I think it's all about really identifying with what your value is. Because that's the beginning. That's the beginning. That's the beginning to you growing through this. And, and so, you know, again, Martha, it was one question with a very broad answer, but I think sometimes stories can help people get clarity. I think so too, because that did resonate with me a lot when you're sharing your story, because I think a lot of us that who are having children involved, um, having other factors, and another factor is financial um, sustainability, um, that they find it so hard to make that choice. And I'm grateful that like for you to actually share it also, like even coming from a coach point of view, yes, we are coaching other people, but when we are stuck in our certain mindset we think that oh this is the way for better because other things is more important than you yourself is more important compared to um like everything else that's happening i know that at when we're at a, like a stuck mindset 
that we feel like our work is more important, our kids is more important, everything else is more important compared to what we truly are important because we cannot pull from an empty cup. And a lot of us do continue to do that until the breaking point. And yes, I understand that you do need your um, time to actually get into the white right mindset. Yes, you do need that guidance to go full. Um, the main thing is, is to really reach out for help. Like I'm definitely one person that I say that I will never have any judgment of anyone who don't do anything for themselves because it took me 19 years to be able to take that step. So it's definitely not a blame. It's not a judgment. It is with that when you realize you can cut the crap and ditch that trauma born, that is when you can truly live free. Well, I think I think that that let's talk about the crap. So, <clears throat> one thing that uh, I guess I, we use two acronyms actually: crap and pain, and and they are acronyms for criticism, resistance, anxiety, procrastination, pro, uh, problems, apprehension, internal in, internal conflict, and negative beliefs. So, crap and pain are, are two words that we use to very simply very simply describe what's going on in your unconscious because when you when you are stuck in these trauma bonds when you when you're living in a state state of disbelief and pain because of any trauma that you have experienced or experiencing then you you there's always an aftermath to it there's always a there's always there's always something that's going to be left behind from it i mean my brain anchor used to be shit happens shit happens move on that was how i actually cope with a lot of events in my life shit happens move on but the thing is that you don't move on because the shame the guilt the contempt the anger the sadness the disbelief the heartache it all gets locked deep down in the unconscious and the unconscious uh, remember that that your brain is your control center and your brain functions on information that gets stored in here now we don't always have control over the information that gets gets stored because when you're experiencing any form of life event good bad or ugly or wonderful um you know it, it, it stuff st stuff happens here it, it happens uh, and and when you're stuck in, in a trauma bond or you're stuck in a relationship that is completely dysfunctional and painful then let me let me say it again the anger the sadness the, the contempt the heartache the pain all of that pain and crap it gets locked and it, it gets entangled deep deep in that unconscious brain and you also remember always remember this this is this is this is just grade seven neuroscience but I've spent it, I've spent a lifetime studying it so what I'm what I'm sharing with you has what saved my life um, and I know it can also save yours. And when I say save your life, I know that might sound a little bit dramatic, but there's a lot of people that come through this that are, are unable to save themselves. So I know that this will, what I'm sharing with you today, will help you take some action, but just one step at a time. And if you need help, please reach out. Caroline's going to put some links in the chat. So you know, we'll put in a calendar link. If you feel that you'd like to have a confidential personal conversation please just reach out book in a time um so this pain and this, this crack gets locked and you, you don't even know it's there you just don't know it's there you just know that you're living life less than what you want you you just know that that there's stuff going on that that's causing you to feel less than what you want to feel and and it can cause you it can stop you it can stop your success it can cause you to get sick it certainly is going to stop you from having healthy, happy relationships. Um, it's called negative anchoring. That's what it's called. It's called negative anchoring. And this negative an anchoring just can drive your life. That your belief is what drives your life. So what is stuck deep, deep in your unconscious brain that is driving your life and you don't know how to shift it? You see, changing your mindset, ah, Easy peasy pie, right? They're words, but what does it mean? What it means is that you've got to reset your mind. And the only way that you can reset your mind is by changing what's in your unconscious, getting rid of that pain and the crap so that you can reset your mind. You know, your, your mind is, is your mind is the instrument to your brain. And, and the only way that you're going to change your mind or, or have a mindset it can grow you forward is by changing what's going on in, in your brain. So releasing that pain and crap 
has to be part of that grow forward process. And again, I am not going to tell you it's easy because it's ongoing. It's not, it's, it isn't a destination. And, and, and if anybody tells you that it is, they are lying to you. And I will say that and I will shout that from rooftops because the layers keep coming off. You have to be committed to wanting to be the best version of yourself. And there will always be layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. You just got to get on the journey. You know, we've talked about sinking into that wave. Now, once you once you identify how to get back on top of that wave, you're always going to have those waves. But once you know that you can, once you start to take those steps and you believe that you can, then the, the journey becomes easier and fun and you start to grow through it. So the pain and the crap, has to be part of that process so that you can release that anchor. Just visualize a boat's anchor. Boom. When that anchor goes down, that boat doesn't go anywhere. It may rock a little bit, you know, <laughs> up and down and around in circles, but it isn't going anywhere. And the aftermath of, of abuse and trauma, it's, it's like that. It, it's called a brain anchor. So you've got to release that anchor. And the only way that you can release that anchor here it is, is you want to have a vision of where you're going. Now, here's, here's, a, here's a big one, and this is fact. Now, Einstein said that imagination was more powerful than knowledge. Well, science now tells us that this is a fact. Um, and whether you're breaking trauma bonds or wanting to build a, multi, a, a multinational company, it doesn't matter what you want to achieve in life. Your brain has to see it. So if you're, st if you're stuck in, this, in this, this disbelief and this pain still, then one thing, one thing, another one thing that you can do right now, as you can see, I'm giving you a little list of things that you can do, <laughs> decide on one of them and take some action, um, is to create a vision of what you want your future to look like. Now, I also know that this is going to, this is going to be a challenging thing to do alone. I had a coach that helped me, go, go, help me do this. I remember I was I was working um, with a coach and had started working with a new coach. I've grown up with coaches. I've been a coach for 30 years, but I've also grown up with coaches. Coaching has helped me become the, the woman that I am today, to build the success that I have today because I didn't like feeling bad. Remember when I first we first started this presentation, what do I have to do to be better? Um, and this coach said to me, I want you to write a three-page story of your ideal day. Oh, cool. That's easy to do. Do you know what? That it was the one of the most challenging things I had done at that point. It took me six weeks to write a three-page story of my ideal day. Why? Because of these brain anchors telling me I didn't deserve it, telling me that I wasn't worthy, telling me that I was a bad person and I didn't deserve to live that life that I that 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 I I didn't deserve it. So if I didn't deserve it. How could I possibly write a story about it? What, what are your brain anchors telling you and stopping you from becoming the, the person, the woman that you were born to be? But I rang my coach every week and every week he, he, he asked me one question. Have you written that three-page story yet? And when I said no, he just literally hung up on me. And then I realized that this man was not going to talk to me until I had written this three-page story. So I made myself, I stopped life, and I made myself sit down and start to write this, this three-page story of a perfect day for me. And you know what happened? There was a shift in my thinking. I felt the anchors. I felt the anchor, anchors being released. And then it became fun. It's like, oh, my gosh, I could have this and I could have that. Oh, and I could create that and I can build that global team. And, you know, I went from what I wanted personally to what I wanted professionally, um, and, and it became a fun activity. Do you know the day that I phoned this coach and said I've done it was one of the happiest days of my life? Who Go figure. You know, But I just felt so much joy because I started to feel these anchors release. And we can do the same for you. We can help you really release these anchors. Please click on the link and talk to us because being stuck with these anchors stopping you is is uh, you're so much you're worth so much more than that. So if you're listening to this and then just know that you're worthy, just know that you're worthy. So the brain then has to see something, right? 
Um, so here, if you're stuck, if you're stuck in the same scenario where you can't even imagine thinking about thinking about what you want, what's happening with the brain? A couple of things. We now know that imagination is more powerful than knowledge. We also know that the brain, even though the brain resists change, we know that we can change it. And the very first, the very first step that, that you must do, and I use that as an absolute, must do to change any situation is allow the brain to see what it is that you want. Okay? The brain has to see what you want. Now, if you if, if we do not put something beautiful, panoramic, panoramic, exciting, in clear detail, connected to the heart space, and you believe that it's possible, your brain is going to draw from images of the pain and the crap from yesterday's trauma. Bring it into today. You believe it's still real today. And what's that going to do? That's going to keep locking up that bond with the trauma that you've experienced. Now, again, I, I, I wish I could say to you that this is easy because, because I know that it's not. But here's the, here's the crazy thing about belief. Even though it's not easy, the more you tell yourself it is, the easier it becomes, right? So, <laughs> but I know doing it, doing it with a coach certainly, certainly pushes you through the days that you don't think is possible. And the faster that you connect with what you want, all success is powered by what you want. Doesn't matter what it is, all success is powered by what you want. So just decide today what is one thing that you want? What is one thing that you want? could just be a you know I know that if you're stuck in trauma right now that seeing a bigger picture of what you want it's too big too too far too hard to reach just think about one thing that you want one thing that is going to help you start to step forward into what is possible for you Okay, because it just just it doesn't matter whether you do a teeny step or you take massive big steps all steps forward are going to start to release that brain anchor of disbelief and pain and heartache. Going to start to allow you to believe that it's possible because every single time you start to feel yourself sink back into that wave, you press play and boom, up pops that vision of what it is that you actually want. So I hope that answers your question, Martha. That has, that has, because it is true. Um, a lot of the times that when I go on to interview or podcast, the one thing that they said to me, okay, what is the last tips that you can give to people? I always say that ask, because during the time of my depression and anxiety, I didn't know there was a better way. I didn't know that there is another way of thinking because my brain at that time, at that resources that I have, was there was no other way. So a lot of us that who are stuck in that mindset um, just need to know there is a possibility of another way when we decided to choose it. Yes, circumstances does come into play, but there is always a something else that you can do to it if you are not scared to take that little bit of a step forward it is also about understanding that there is possibility of people that who are willing to help you um that is the big key I remember when I get my first mentor I know that I couldn't afford it right up front but then at least that I have pay it off a little bit on a payment plan and that helped me to become a lot more than I used to a lot of people get stuck in the financial mindset that poverty mindset thinking that oh I can never afford this but guess what everything that I said that I will it will happen it does happen it's just speaking because of our mindset so if you are looking for some support if you are looking for a different path definitely take the advantage of having a chat with Susan having a chat with Caroline just to have a talk about what option is there because guess what we only know what we know we don't know what we don't know when we show a different path your result could be very different than you ever can imagine. So Susan, uh, to wrap this up today, what are the last few advice that you can give us that we can use to cut that trauma bone? I'd like to, um, I'd just like to bring up the, the money, just to have mm. a, 
that money and and just to the next just the next step when it comes to comes to mm. the brain um money is merely green energy with wings but it's also a t very much attached to our self-worth mm. these brain anchors keeping you stuck in the pain and disbelief and heartache of the trauma then excuse me not only do you believe that you're worthy of love worthy of success worthy of living a happy healthy life you don't see the value of spending money there, there's such a relationship between the value of self and the value of actually spending money um, because mm. there's a shift in thinking see once you start to to release these brain anchors once you've written that story of how you want your life to be uh, and you start to to develop that a new way of thinking about it. And there's no way that you can change your thinking unless you start to release these brain anchors, put different information into your brain. It's like, think about your neural pathways as roadways. Think about them as roads. So that so you, you're traveling down a road, you, you get up every day, let's say you go to the supermarket. You don't need to think about what road you need to take to get to the supermarket. You just hop in your car and you drive there. There's no conscious thinking. You just know where to go. Well, that's because there's been a neural pathway set and, and so the brain just knows wh where you are going. But that supermarket shuts down and a new one opens up across town. And so you've got to find a new way. You've got to start thinking about how to get there. You put it into your GPS and off you go. So think about think about your life as that. If you're experiencing, if you are, are living in trauma, living in the state of trauma um, because th these brain anchors are holding you back. You need to just change direction. You need to create a new roadway in your brain so that you, so that you can travel down a new road. Uh, that's the, the simplest way of describing it. Um, and so it really has to be that new road has to has to know where it's where you're going. So that's why you need to identify that you want. Um, number one uh, and then of course the other part of breaking free of, of these brain anchors is is to be okay with being uncomfortable now this is the, and this is if I can just take a couple of minutes to talk about this because this is a little bit of I think an oxymoron because who is comfortable living in trauma nobody and so when people say, you know, have said to me over the years, oh my gosh, but I'm already uncomfortable. You're in, you're, you're uncomfortable in a state of, uh, let's call it pain and crap. You're, you're uncomfortable in a state of pain and crap. So you already, you already know how to be uncomfortable, but it's about shifting it, shifting it, packaging it all differently. Because to grow forward, you have to step out of the comfort zone that's got you locked in there. Now, it's called the comfort zone, but you're in a comfort zone of discomfort and pain. You're in the comfort zone of discomfort and pain. So you need to open the door. You need to open the door of that and start to step out. And every time you open that comfort, that, that door, I, 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 I've got a PowerPoint actually where it's a glass box. You're in the glass box and in that glass box, you're seeing out, you're seeing what you want. You're seeing where you want to be. You're seeing, you're seeing a happier, healthier future, but you can't get out of that glass box. Now you can get out of that glass box and all you need to do, and it takes 20 seconds of insane courage to open the door and take one step. So please know that even though you're in this pain, you're in the comfort zone of being uncomfortable the comfort zone of living in this pain and this discomfort so just decide because remember in the beginning of this conversation I said that you need to make start making different decisions decide one just decide one thing to do today and as soon as you take action on that one thing you've opened the door to that glass box and you've reset your comfort zone but as you start to take that Step every day doing one thing your comfort zone of discomfort becomes more enjoyable because you're now you're stepping into a world that you want to be in now you're stepping into a world where you're believing more in yourself now you're stepping into a world with hope and possibility for your future so really just really really just believe that to be true because it absolutely is um we we have another link that caroline's going to put in the post in the chat um and we did a mental well-being series 
last year actually we interviewed 12 mental health professionals now you can get that whole webinar series for only 17 dollars it's in it's in the as i said click on the link in the post right now um and you can get these these 11 experts are talking all about how you can manage what's going on here you know you may not connect with every single one but i can promise you if you listen to every single conversation in those 11 webinars you are going to come away with a list of steps that you can take action on immediately and remember every step you take you're opening up the glass of you're opening up the door in that glass comfort zone that you've been looking out of and starting to release those brain anchors that are keeping you stuck just know that um, it's possible for you to be free of, it's possible for you to start to live your life being free. Um, I, I look at, I think it's a little bit like being a smoker or an alcoholic, and I'm just giving you the cold, cold hard facts. I'm not somebody who will ever, ever wrap it up in a really pink, pink bow and tell you that everything is always going to be right because it's not but what I am going to tell you is that if you start taking action on what we've talked about today your life will start to change for the better and then when boom stuff happens and shit happens and bs happens and life happens you've got the tools and the resources that you can manage it grow forward from it so you're not sinking down into that wave and causing yourself to be locked in those brain anchors in those chains of despair and unhappiness again that's something I can promise you. Um, and why do I know this to be true? Because with all of the trauma that I've experienced, I've never experienced anxiety. I've never been depressed. I've never wanted to kill myself. Um, had the occasional marijuana joint that calms me down. Um, but I have never, ever used drugs or alcohol to ease the pain. Because everything I've talked about with you today, I have practiced from the early age of when I was only 20 years old. So please take heed to what we've talked about. Um, I think Martha was asking me a couple of things before we just finish off today. The very first thing I want you to do, as I said in the beginning, is to think about one thing that you could do today that's going to give you back control. They're going to feel like you're in control of you. That's the very first thing. And, and do that. Do Just as soon as you finish listening to this, just do it. Because that is that is a massive big step for you to know that you are you are in control and you're the only person who can be in control. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to grab a pen and paper and I want you to write down what you want. What is it that you want? What do you want? What do you want? The third thing I want you to do is to get that mental that mental well being series because I know that that is going to help you more than you could ever possibly imagine. Um, and then, of course, reach out to us. Reach out to us. Click on the link. Reach out to us. Um, there is going to be another link in the post that if you wanted to invest and start working with us. But please, just take action on one of those things today and we can start to free up these brain anchors that are causing you to loop around. I am, you know, the good, the bad, the good, the bad, the good, the bad. I am, I'm not, I am, I'm not. Just know that you always are um, and be open to being okay. You know, one of the biggest lessons that I had once was that I had somebody just email me randomly and said to me, Susie, even helpers need helpers. And so be okay asking for help because you know what? It just works. That's just beautiful. And yes, everyone, you need to start taking that one step. Okay. We all have a choice to make and we want it to be able to inspire you to take that one step today. Check out our comments link in there. I'll put down all those links in the show notes later on as well. But thank you, Susan and Caroline today for supporting us on this journey of understanding what trauma born is, for understanding Understanding all those brain anchor that has been dragging us down, making us not being able to move forward. All of those things that we can make a decision to decide to change today. Thank you so much again for giving us your wisdom. And I'm sure that we'll be seeing you on this space a lot more because I just love your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Please, if you're listening to this, just take one just take, do one thing different today one thing 
just one thing you can do that can't you of course you can wonderful thank you so much again for all our audience and our listener i look forward to seeing you back here again on knowledge is power first day bye bye for now